Here it is. And now, three years later, we are filming another Meet All My Pets. I think the first video is my most watched. People love it. And you've all been asking for this for so long. If you don't know me, hello, I'm Adri, and I am the founder of a 501c3 nonprofit animal rescue. It's been a little over a year since I started the nonprofit. I quit my job, I sold my house, and moved out <laughs> kind of into the middle of nowhere in Georgia. I bought a 200 year old house and have slowly added uh, what is now about 200 acres and a second farm to the sanctuary. I started out as just a pet lover that had a lot of animals uh, and most of them were adopted or rescued and their stories and watching their transformations is what motivated me to do this, um, seeing the need for it and then seeing that I could make a difference for some of them um, is then what turned it into what it is now. And so I, I'm i really excited to share all of the animals with you. I also want to share some of their stories with you though, because I think the all my pets craze or fad <laughs> where everyone loves these videos can also kind of send a a detrimental message in some cases. We're potentially encouraging people to, to want to have that many pets. Unfortunately, for some of the animals I've taken in, that's how they've ended up here. So I don't wanna discourage anyone from getting pets that they are really knowledgeable about and really passionate about and equipped to take care of for their entire lives. But at the same time, I don't wanna be a part of the problem, I guess, by encouraging people to get these animals and pretending that it's easy or that it's always fun or that it's affordable or anything like that. So I know no one wants to hear these long rambling lectures. You just wanna see the cute pets, but I have to say it for my own peace of mind before I create this video. I'm gonna take you through and basically I have compiled a ton of clips of the animals over the last few years. You'll notice that some of them I don't have anymore. Uh, it has been three years and three or more actually. Some of them have been adopted out, which is the goal for some of the animals I take in certainly. And some of them have passed away because a lot of them I take in are seniors or sick, malnourished, or they just have short lifespans. As of today, the day of filming this, these are the animals I have subject to change. <laughs> I hope you enjoy. Thank you for stopping by, for watching the video, for supporting my channel all these years. Hopefully if you are new here, uh, you will subscribe so you can continue to see all of these animals. Cows. I never foresaw myself being this obsessed with cows. Uh, currently we're at 20 cows. That is the two mini cows who I got from an elderly woman after her husband passed away. Three dairy cows, they all came from the farm next door. When they sold that farm, they also wanted to sell all of their animals. Um, and so I actually sold my truck, my dream truck, to pay for their dairy cows and highland cows. Highland cows. The rest of them are Highlands. I've always loved Highland cows, but never really foresaw myself owning them because um, they're kind of a fad pet. But the first herd came here, a woman had died, her children did not want anything to do with the cows, and they were scheduled to be sent to a meat auction. And so we stepped in and bought them. These last ones, some of them were scheduled to be slaughtered and the rest were also going to an auction. And so didn't really anticipate my bleeding heart buying a second herd of cows in the same year, but I did. So now my farm car is a Prius. I have the Tagu. She spent her first two years of life in a 20 gallon tank on sand eating cat food. And so she has a lot of health issues um, and her growth is severely stunted, but she's very sweet. Two emus. The horses and mules. Uh, I have Lore, who was one of my very first rescues. I have a whole video about him as well. Was found 
abandoned in a field in Tennessee along with several other horses um, and several deceased horses because they'd been left with nothing. So I had him shipped from Tennessee to Texas, sight unseen. Unfortunately, he's lame, um, so he's not rideable essentially. So he's just been my beautiful pasture pet. There's the mini horse who was previously used as a therapy horse, but is now retired and living out the rest of her life on the farm. There's Barbie, her owner passed away um, and I had previously known her and loved her. And so um, I drove to Texas one day and picked her up. Um, package deal though, I also had to take Bandit, who is an older horse who is also blind. Bilbo, I got in Texas. Um, his owners had bred him, absolutely loved him, but could no longer keep him. Bourbon we got uh, when we bought the farm next door. They sold a bunch of their animals and so they um, surrendered Bourbon to us. One Louis Lamb. He was meant to be a foster, um, but I think he's a permanent resident. I hope he's a permanent resident. I took him in to bottle feed him for a farm that didn't have the time to after his mother rejected him. And now he lives here. The alpacas, there's a whole video about them. Um, so we drove to Illinois because we heard about a farmer that desperately needed to get rid of a ton of alpacas. Uh, we went up there with the intention of bringing back around 10 to 12 and um, got there and the numbers were just staggering. And so we lined up another home for them uh, in North Carolina for some of them. We brought back all 20, kind of debated it, built new fences and stuff. It was way too many. So, um, so we did rehome some of them to North Carolina. Uh, so these are our alpaca herd. The bearded dragon, basically a kid adored her but her care was really ina inadequate. She spent her life in a very small tank with poor lighting. She's also very old now. I have three sugar gliders. A woman who meant really well got her sons some sugar gliders as a gift and didn't realize if you don't neuter the males, you end up with a ton of sugar gliders. And so she desperately needed to rehome a bunch of them. So I took in three, neutered two of them, and now they are living happily and a ton of chickens. I love chickens. I'm the crazy chicken lady. I want more chickens. I probably will be getting more chickens. <laughs> Basically, anytime I see ads on Craigslist for chickens, I get them. One turkey for now. Uh, again, I would love more turkeys. Four peacocks. I have tortoises, Sandor and Gregor. Uh, their owner's probably watching this. Uh, they got really big and also really aggressive with each other. And so her setup and trying to move them around as needed, when needed, just became overwhelming. They live here. Uh, she's wonderful. They, Her and her daughter actually found me through this channel. I have four rabbits. They are all Angoras. Um, Angoras are adorable, adorable bunnies and crazy high maintenance. And so they all came from breeders though, who were using them for their fiber. So they're all kind of older bunnies. If you are considering getting this adorable fluffy bunny, especially for children, um, I would urge you to reconsider um, perhaps getting a different breed. So much work to keep up with these rabbits. Fainting goats. I have a f mostly fainting goats with a few other random rescue goats thrown in. They, came from a man who was in a car accident and had to um, downsize his farm in light of that. And so we went and picked up half of his herd to begin with. He was gonna try really hard, he loves his goats, try really hard to keep the other half, but ultimately, yeah, contacted us a little while later saying he could not manage it. And so we went and got the other half. Um, along with them, again, came some random goats, a feral goat, um, a former meant to be meat goat that was bottle fed that they couldn't stomach eating. Lots of goats. The Legionis geckos I drove to Michigan for them. Originally, this guy had had um, five Legionis geckos born to him. And so he realized this is not for him. He got in over his head, he'd made a mistake. All but the two I got died. Claire, 
who is a beagle that we found um, in the road. There's only one dog that I actually pursued myself. That was Pippin. Uh, he's been with me for 13 years, I think. Uh, then there's Brody, who was surrendered to me at uh, 11 years old when his owners moved and could not take him with them. And Charlie, who was a package deal with my boyfriend, adopted him from the shelter. The Chihuahua Mamas, they are still here. They are some of the dogs that are up for adoption. And that is Sylvanas and Jaina. They're named after World of Warcraft. A backyard breeder in Georgia was broken up. I went and took in these two sisters who were in fact pregnant. About a month later, I had two litters of puppies born uh, within a day of each other. And a loon is one of my foster failures from those litters. And then there's Mocha, who we found on Christmas on my road. We have Hodor, whose owners decided uh, when he was six months old that a Great Dane was really too big for them. I have Oink, who is an English bulldog that was abandoned here around five years old. Unfortunately, Oink is really aggressive with all other animals. So I've kind of tried to find him a home before, but so far we've not found a perfect fit yet. Duncan came along just a few months ago now. His owner sadly passed away from COVID. Arwen, who someone was selling at a flea market in exchange for a bag of dog food to feed his other dog. Um, Arwen later had 12 puppies. The Sofrodo and Sam are from those 12 puppies. Kasika, who mostly stays with my mother, but she was found on a beach on our trip to Costa Rica and we fell in love with her. She never left our sides the remainder of the trip. We ended up spending the last two days of our vacation canceling all of our adventures, zip lining and exploring and things like that. And instead we located a vet and got all of her paperwork done booked a ticket for her to come back home with us. There's Dude or Doodlebug. His owners had for 12 years and then they got a new puppy and thought um, that Dude would be happier with me instead. As of the filming of this video, Doodle is not doing very well and um, will probably not make it much longer at all, if I'm being perfectly honest. Birds. I am really passionate about birds and I hope to continue to offer a permanent home for large birds. We have two macaws and a kike and an African gray and two cockatoos. They all came from different places, but basically their story is all the same. Their owners loved them dearly and took good care of them, but couldn't see through the 50 plus year commitment that these birds can be. It's pretty understandable for people in a normal situation. I adopted quail on the advice of some zookeepers to keep in the bottom of my aviaries. They get along great with the large birds and they keep it clean. Pigs, so many pigs. And that's a number that changes all the time. <laughs> have, making this video, I have five pigs people are trying to give to me, um, all different sizes, ages, personalities, whatever. So I also have a few people on a waiting list to adopt pigs through me. That's kind of constantly revolving um, and it needs to be in order to continue to save as many as I can. There are certainly some that are permanent residents um, either just because they're not friendly at all or they're older or I love them. My average number of pigs any given month is right around 20. Currently I'm trying to expand my pig facilities so that I can take in a lot more. I, I don't feel comfortable having more than 20 in the space that I have right now. I have three snakes at the moment. I love snakes. I want a lot more snakes, to be honest. Once the reptile house is totally finished, I will be taking in any snake that needs a home, any reptile that needs a home. I have three ferrets at the moment. One of them is not doing so well quite old. So I took in two originally. Uh, those are the two that you all know. We are probably going to be losing one of them. And so in preparation for that, I did go out and adopt another ferret. Cats. There are lots of cats. And actually, sometimes I go out in the barn and I have more cats. But the generally permanent residents, the ones that I see on a daily basis, there is Lisa, who was found in a parking lot. Lisa is a boy. Then there's Panthro, who I found um, clearing out a house that a family member had just purchased. Uh, there was an old cat living in it. There's Chitara, who was being given away for free at a flea market. There's Theo, who was kicked out of his apartment when his owner was being evicted and had nowhere to go. There's Evil, who's really Miss Farrell, but he's a food stealer. He came into my vet clinic when I was working there. Sylvester, my sister found in her neighborhood. Cheese, who was 
a farm cat that needed a new home, macaroni, who they are inseparable, cheese and macaroni. And he was being given away by his elderly owner um, after her Persian cat had accidentally had kittens. Uh, he is deaf. So I've been filming this for so long that the sun has now moved across the room. Um, hopefully you enjoyed seeing all of them. I'm hoping I got everyone in the video. I'm sure I, I tend to forget. If you enjoyed this, uh, please stick around, subscribe, like your support. Uh, it means everything at this point. The support that I get uh, through here is really what is making all of this possible. Uh, check out my other videos. There's a bunch of links below to some of my other social media and um, some ways to help support the sanctuary. We did it. See you again in three years for all my bets.